Hey, Just Agents, it's Lori and Kayleen here in Colorado, and we are one of your top coaching teams here for video marketing here in the country. We love video marketing, and we're gonna show you all about how we do it, the ins and outs. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and that bell, and we're gonna teach you how to get free leads here in 2021. So we are partnering with people in different ways. Let us know what we can do to help support your business, and we can talk you through any of the options that we have that may um, help help get you that free lead generation and more sales. Right, we always tell our agents, it's really about who you align yourself with in this mm -hmm. business. So get someone that you respect, someone that you mentor, someone you wanna align and mimic their business and you know that trajectory that they have. And that is about how you get your success here in this um, industry. So reach out, 719-639-3393. We'd love to help you build your business. Agents, it's Lori and Kayleen here today for with Just Finest Agents here in Colorado. And today we are bringing you Donnie Morrow. Donnie Morrow is a team leader out in Memphis, Tennessee. He's been doing it for seven and a half years and he has um, almost 31 agents. So it's just a rock star. We're going to talk to him a little bit about building a team today. So let's get right to it. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. How are you? Hi, Donnie. I'm good. Thanks for asking. How was it out there in Memphis? It's beautiful. We had that crazy weather a few weeks ago, but finally the rain moved out and everything is drying up and now we're sunny and 60, 70 degrees. So we're loving it. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Well, we wanted to talk to you because I know that you have grown a team successfully. Um, and I think that's a big part of real estate is just building your team. And, you know, from when you build a team, you have to do it the correct way. And I think if you jump in too soon, um, you know, it just... It, it can fail pretty quickly. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about you and your background, how you got started in real estate, and then maybe how or when you decided that building a team was the right decision for you. Sure. So uh, I started in real estate. I was actually a police officer in Memphis and uh, basically had taken a pay cut to become a police officer and decided I needed a second income like so many of our first responders do. But I didn't want to go yeah. just get another job. I had owned some investment property in the past. Before that, and I had always kind of thought about my real estate license, but never had the opportunity to do it. But since I knew I enjoyed real estate, I said, hey, instead of going to get another job, I'll get my real estate license, make a little money on the side. Actually never intended to go full time. And then I figured when I retired when I was 55, instead of going to get another job at 55, I'd have real estate to supplement my pension. Yep. Um, I was really, really good at it. Um, luckily, you're blessed, whatever um, the case might be. I did well with it. First 12 months of business, sold about 16 houses part time. My first full calendar year, sold 35 or 36 houses at night after getting off from the police department. That included a lot of changing clothes in a car to make an appointment or whatever I had to do. <laughs> We've been there, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, doing paperwork till 11 o'clock at night and getting up at 530 and going back in and doing police work again the next day. So I just kind of did what it took. And that was uh, 2014. The police departments were still making a lot of cuts. And, and honestly, the final straw, I was missing a lot of money because I would split deals with my buddies because I would go to the police department and work for eight hours and make 200 bucks. And then I'd call my buddy and go, hey, I got a client coming in town. If you'll go show them this house and write the offer, I'll split the commission with you. So I would literally go make 800 and lose 3,000 and do it because I'll split the commission. But I wanted to do the right thing. Um, and honestly, the last straw was they basically, I went into work one day and they said, hey, we're doing spousal carve out. Your wife has a job, so we're kicking her off of your insurance. So the next day I turned in my two week notice and the rest is history. So. The rest is history from there. Yeah. I think that's a lot, a, a story for a lot of agents is, yeah. you know, they get into it, they try it out. Um, you know, I don't think you really see the full benefits until you go full time, but we were part time as first. We were in education um, and then we started real estate and, you know, it's a, just a tough market. It's not like you're going to jump in there. I think that's maybe a misconception. And, you know, some people are blessed to kind of do that right away if you have that drive, but you definitely have to have that drive. Um, Cause don't they say like 80% of agents fail within the first two years. So I think if you do it the right way and you have the drive and you're willing to, like you said, change your clothes in your car and, <laughs> and you know, write those offers at yeah. 11 o'clock at night. I mean, if you want that nine to five job, you know, real estate is not it for you. So I think that you probably have that right mindset going into it. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I've got a saying. I got a lot of sayings that I tell my team, and I kind of call them Donnieism sometimes. And my favorite one is absolutely work works. That's the bottom line. Uh, I've never met anybody that said I get on the phone and prospect five hours a day and can't pay my bills. Never happened. Okay? Yeah, work works. Um, and, and I knew once I kind of figured out that hey, I'm I'm decent at this. I knew I could outwork just about anybody. Um, I, and I think it's really hard for a lot of people to work two jobs because you're basically working two full-time jobs. I didn't take a year off or day off for that first 18 months. So I basically worked two full-time jobs for 18 months in order to accomplish that. And I think that's the decision people have to make for themselves is, Hey, I've got to bear down and work two full-time jobs for 12 months in order to give myself the opportunity to reach my dreams. Yeah. To have that stability behind it. Um, how long, I think we talked about a little bit, but how long have, were you in real estate before you decided to initially, when was that first step? When did you first decide to hire that person onto your team? So, who did you hire, I actually, so I went full-time at the end of 2014, I believe it is 2015, no assistant, no anything. My first full-time four year, I sold 72 houses. And I joked that for a long time, I basically hired people when my wife started complaining about me not coming home. Basically, she's kind of like, um, you know, you're never home again. I'm like, okay, I'll hire somebody. And then, and then that was kind of like the assistant. And then it seemed like just a few months later, just like, you know, you're still not really ever home. And I'm like, okay, I'll have a buyer's agent. So it, it really almost came about from necessity that it, number one, while I did sell 70 to 80 to 100 houses for a few years in a row, I knew I didn't want to do that my whole life um, because it's a yeah. lot of work. A lot of work, yeah. Yes. Life work balance. Um, I wanted to control my time back before my kids grew up. My my son now he'll be eight or 19 next month he's a freshman in college my daughter's 25 she's my director of operations but at that point you know it was like the last few years of my youngest child growing up so it's kind of like I can keep doing this but do I really want to or I can go ahead and start expanding and get some help and I do think that that's important um you know Lori said we were in uh education before we got into real estate and we actually helped kids decide what career path they wanted to go and I always thought um, my advice to them was think of how you want your life to look. You can, you can do well at anything. You have to be willing to put in the elbow grease and make it happen. You know, of course, there's steps to get there. But if you're going to succeed at anything, it's just going to take a lot of work. And that really is the bottom line. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Most of us, I, I tell the team all the time, you're not going to trip into the success. It's like debt. You can trip into debt, but you can't trip out of debt. You've got to, uh, you've got to be focused to get out of debt, you know, and, and to, to commit to that discipline of not using those credit cards or, or whatever. And I think success is the right way. You can accidentally fall out of success if you just kind of get lazy or lose a little bit of discipline, but it's very hard to just fall into success. You've got to have a plan and work it consistently and be disciplined about it. Right. So if you step it back a little bit, if you were, you know, a new agent and you are thinking of, you know, you've been in for a year or two and you're thinking of, you know, expanding your team, you said you hired an assistant first. What did that assistant do for you? Um, and how did you find that assistant? Oh, it's a great question because I hear this a lot and I see people want to hire agents first. Right. Because, and, and I think the reason why is because you generally don't have to pay the agent unless he closes something. Whereas when you hire the assistant, you're committing to that paycheck. And there's always that right. little bit of fear Absolutely. of, Ooh, can, can I really do this? Um, and I will say the assistant should never cost you money. They should always grow. If you didn't grow from the assistant, either they did a really bad job or you did a really bad job, one or the other. So I always hire the assistant first. If you hire the agent first, they're just going to make more work for you and hurt your production because then you got to stop and handle all their contract stuff that they're brand new. Maybe if you get lucky and get an experienced agent, that's not the case. But in general, um, they're, you're, they're just going to make more work for you if you don't have the assistant to help you out. So that first assistant, what did they do for me? Because, man, now they do everything for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my job description was always whatever it takes to make the company run as high a profitability as possible. And my assistants always knew that. Um, and so this kind of comes back to like the VA versus a local assistant debate as well. I always hired local assistants. I do have one VA now. Uh, and I wanted him to do whatever it took to make the business work that was legal, basically, is what it come down to. Even down to, hey, I was calling expires this morning. I set an appointment for a $300,000 house, but I got to go get my son from school. I can either go pick up my son from school or I can go make his $9,000 so I can pay you more. What do you want to do? And my sister's like, from school. <laughs> and that's, that's the real deal, though. Like, 
you, you know, and finding somebody that's willing to do any of those things that like, where'd you find this person? Yeah. So I first started my very first assistant. I um, hired off of Craigslist um, and got, no, actually my first assistant was a friend of mine's wife. That didn't work out very well. I learned a lot of lessons on that. Yeah. You um, don't work with friends or family. Usually that's, no, yeah, that lasted about one. Month. Unless they're your kids and you can buy them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your, daughter, your daughter's a good one. Um, and then my next one I hired from Craigslist, we're actually still really good friends. I've uh, talked to her several times last week. She hasn't worked for me in about five years because she had a baby and then come back to work after the baby, which is fine. Right. Um, but she started off she did mostly just contract to close like making sure earnest money got turned in doing amendments if i needed amendments done typing stuff for me um possibly if i, I think back in the day some i did some mailers maybe to expires when i was working expires and i actually had a postcard system of like seven or eight postcards so she actually had a system of day one this postcard goes out day two this post so she would actually address the postcards and send those out for me when i sent postcards to expires um, so everything I can get her to do and the biggest problem people have with assistance is they don't know how to delegate to them. And I struggled with this for a while too. And the, the best system I finally came up with was every day I opened an email, a draft email that said to whoever, we'll, we'll say Courtney, that's my daughter now. Um, and then in the subject line, it says to do, and then it has the following day's date on it. So like today, I don't, I don't do one now because my assistants are well trained, but in the beginning, it would have said to do three, nine, everything that popped up today that I might need the assistance to do tomorrow. I put on that email. As soon as I think about it, it was on that draft email. Yep. That way, I woke up tomorrow. I didn't have to try to remember what do I need Courtney to do for me? What do I need done today? It was all right there. If I added any last minute items on it, I would add it in and then I sent it to her before she ever even came to work. Yeah, that's so a good idea. Boom. She already had her checklist for the day done. Uh, and then she sent me a midday update. So before she went to lunch every day, she would send me an update on which items she had gotten done that day. And, now, and they still do this to this day. All three of my main assistants, uh, the buy side transaction coordinator, the sell side transaction coordinator, and coordinator the director of operations, still to this day, they send me what we call an EOD, which is an end of day. And they let me know everything they do because they work from home, especially during COVID. They work at the office. I'm never in the office. Um, literally, they work and I hardly ever see them. I think... Uh, I went to the office like two or three weeks ago, and it was the first time I've been in the office since Thanksgiving. And, and I said, like, man, I ain't seen y'all forever. So, uh, so they do it all without me even being there. And so what made you decide to, well, I was just going to back up a little bit. We actually have a transaction coordinator that we love. Like if you don't have a transaction coordinator, I don't know how you do it as a real estate yes. agent. She keeps her head on straight. She does all the paperwork, the title work, all that stuff that we don't love to do. I think you got to pick what you love to do in real estate and do that part well. And then delegate and ask for help in the other areas because you're never gonna be able to all do it by yourself, especially if you want to provide that service for your clients. That's top notch. Absolutely. So after that, you got hired a buyer's agent, you said, and then what did that look like? And then how did you grow from there? Did you bring just people? And I think um, we can talk about the next point too, um, as Kayleen was asking is, you know, what are the different parts of your team? Like, how did you grow your team within EXP? So my first buyer's agent, when I hired him, um, I do Zillow, love it or hate it. I, I do pay for online leads. Um, and the year before, when I had sold 72 houses, I had 42 buyers. I had 30 sellers. I knew my numbers, by the way. So that helped a lot because I knew where I was going. Yeah. Um, and a lot of agents have a hard time with this because they don't even know their numbers. And they're kind of like, well, if I take over if I give the buyers to a buyer's agent, what am I going to be doing? Well, you should know what you're going to be doing because you should know your numbers. You should already know what your business is. So my goal was for me to still to sell the same number of houses. I still wanted to sell 72 houses, but I wanted it to be all sellers. And then I wanted my first buyer's agent to still sell 30 or 35 buyers. So that was the plan. So the key was I did not work any less. I still worked just as much or more. So even if he would have been a complete failure, I still would have been fine because I would have sold, I still would have sold the same number of houses. So it wouldn't have really cost me anything. And I think that's the key. So many agents want to hire a team because they don't want to do the work anymore. Or maybe they're a little burnt out or they're going really hard and they don't want to go quite that hard. The truth is it generally gets worse before it gets better when you first start hiring your team. Growing um, teams. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. I mean, you, you don't just, I mean, Elon Musk didn't grow Tesla overnight, right? It, it takes time to do right. these things. 
Um, so that following year, we sold 106 houses. I think I sold right at 70 again. I think I sold about the same. But the cool thing was I went from 60% buyers to like 5% buyers because I kept working the same, but I focused my attention on sellers. Yeah. And my buyer's agent sold like 30. And then I think we hired a second buyer's agent that year. And she sold like maybe five by the end of that year. So it, it came up to 106. So I um, heard something interesting and I just want to get your honest take on it. Um, the, the person who we were talking to, they had said, why hire one person at a time? I always hire two. One, it creates competition and two, you're doing the same training one time. I, I, I thought it over and yes, pros and cons. What's your thought on that? Um, it's always good to have two pigs at the trough. Some people may or may not like that analogy. Um, we're in the South, so it goes over good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like to hire and train two at a time. I cringe if I had to train one at a time now. I think it's very hard when you're new. When you're first starting to build your team, maybe you don't have the value proposition yet. Maybe you don't have your training systems in place. I have training systems in place now. I have a recruiter that helps me recruit and train. Um, you know, I've got checklists of exactly what classes they're going to get. I pretty well know the systems. I don't handle their onboarding paperwork. I send an email to Olivia and Courtney and say, hey, this person is coming on board. Send them the instructions for how to join EXP and come on the team. So now I absolutely agree. I don't want to train one agent at a time. If you're onboarding three and one of them decides, hey, I, I knew I was going to have to work, but I didn't know I was really going to have to work and I'm going to quit in two weeks, then you get just waste your time. Because if you train one at a time and you spend a month on them and then they decide, man, I don't really like this real estate stuff. And that happens. Yeah. Then, yeah. Or, or I got to go get a job because I need a paycheck. You know, <laughs> whatever the case might be, then yeah. you just wasted your time. So at the point I am today, I'm a big believer in training more than one at a time. Mm -hmm. Right. And what did you change to EXP? So we're with EXP as well. And how has that um, helped grow your team? Because we've just found switching to EXP, we were with a boutique brokerage, we were with Keller Williams, and now we are with EXP. And that has been phenomenal as far as us to grow our business. Um, we call it no walls, no limit. Like we just love that we can reach out across, you know, the country, across the world almost and reach and grow our team. Um, and so how long have you been with EXP and how has that um, helped your business? Yeah, I think our official transfer was October 26 of 2020. So coming up on four months here that we've been at VXP and we've loved it. The model is just a model that I don't think anything else can touch. I actually had set out to open my own brokerage. And when I revisited EXP, because I'd seen it in the past. And yeah, I was we were thinking the same thing. We were wondering mm -hmm. which way to go. It was probably October at the same time. We were like, do we do our own brokerage? And then we found EXP. And I'm like, that allows us to do everything we want with and more with um with exp so it just made sense for us yeah well and for me what it really came down to is i could not offer the opportunities to my agents yep. that exp did at my own brokerage I, I might build a great asset for myself but i can't get my agents shares in the company i can't get my agents rep share because i don't have that kind of a model built out yet no model uh, stock yet no Mario group stock for them yet? Stock is, no, no Mario group stock. Maybe someday. We'll, yeah, someday, right? Goals. We'll be on the NASDAQ, it's right? So, yeah, so that was, you know, the, the big determining factor for me was, holy smokes, my agents had the same opportunity that I have. I thought that was really cool. You know, I've got single dads on the team. I've got single moms on the team. How could I not give them the opportunity to be able to build their future the same way I could? Right. So I had to do that. As far as what EXP has done to help me recruit to the team, anybody who open has an open mind and sits down and looks at the model, I think absolutely has to think this is a good model. If they believe it, not everybody's going to believe it the first time, but you have to think it's a good model. And I had so many people, even on my team, plus people since then, that were like, I really look like the EXP, but I wanted to come work for you. And now I get to have both. So literally several people on my team were like, this is amazing. And we are a mega team. So my agents have a very low cap. And of course they love that. I remember one of my agents, her first contract was like 500 and something thousand, which for us is a good contract. Our average price is about 250. And she called me and she's like, this is so cool. I'm going to be 40% capped after one closing. Yeah. So yeah. What are you at, 4,000 for? No, they're at quarter cap at, for a mega team. Yes, 4,000. So, so could you go through that? Um, my experience, so I was actually just talking to someone last night and they were explaining a friend scenario who had, who's an agent and they were over at EXP. Um, when they moved over, they thought it was going to be more like a partnership. 
And what had happened is they were as a standard team. So maybe um, we could talk about the different team setups at EXP and kind of what the benefits are. Um, and, and I do, I think people have to be very intentional about where they see themselves um, down the road and not just in the moment. Yes, it's great. I mean, we ate, we, we capped at Keller Williams the month before we moved over. Um, you know, we, we had to be willing to start all over, but we saw the benefit. Yeah. So not thinking so about the now, but even a year down the road, five years down the road, 20 years down the road. And I do believe that's what EXP provides is that exit strategy. So being intentional about it from the beginning is huge. So maybe we could go through team structures. Sure. Um, yeah, I think words matter. Uh, we actually talked about this on my huddle with my team this morning. You know, the words you put on a contract matter because you're basically dabbling in law. And it's the same thing when you're working with your teams, whether it's in EXP or outside of EXP. So I think when people come on board, they don't necessarily understand, especially if they're a newer agent, the different nuances from teams and yeah. what team. Yeah, are. it's just a name. Um, yeah. Right. So obviously one meeting of a team is the agents that are directly on my team. I'm giving them leads. I'm giving them accountability. I am training them probably till their eyes bleed, um, you know, giving them KPIs to follow, giving them CRM systems, TC support to get the contract to close so they can just focus on writing offers, uh, answering their phone calls at 10 o'clock at night. I am doing all those things. It's nonstop every day when you have 30 agents. I mean, I'm almost like their coach, you know, and then um, the other part that some people might call a team is just people that are in your downline at EXP. So if I know you all out in Colorado and I'm like, hey, EXP is an amazing company. You should come join. They got a lot of training, which is all great. Uh, and you go, yeah, sure. I'll sign up. It sounds awesome. I love that model. But the truth is you and I are going to have a very different dynamic and relationship from what I have with my 30 people who are right here with me that I am talking to multiple times a day that I am training personally when they come on board. We have like 16 classes and I'm teaching them every one of those classes in person, their first two or three weeks in business. I'm handing them a database of leads for them to start calling as soon as they come on board. The truth is, if you're on that long distance team or you're not on a direct team and you're just in someone's downline, they probably can't do those things for you, to be honest with you. Um, and if they can't do it for their local team, then I know they can't do it for you because they're not, they're just not there yet. So I think people really need to dig in and understand where you are. EXP is awesome. The training is awesome. No other brokerage that I know of can offer the amount of training because think about it. If I'm in my local big box brokerage here locally and I want to offer 50 hours of training a week, somebody's got to be basically full-time on payroll plus pay, plus overtime to, to teach that training, right? Yeah. Um, usually not the case. So I don't think most local places can match what EXP does. But I think people do need to be uh, aware of, hey, that person in Tennessee can only do so much for me here in Colorado. Right. I think it's just about educating yourself a little bit on that. So we, yes. you know, we used to be with Keller Williams, like we noted, and we had a broker there. And I mean, they were there if we needed them, but we re not really. I mean, we honestly. We were the type to go sit in the office. And we wanted yeah. the flexibility of doing our own thing and making our own business. And I think you said you haven't been to your office for three weeks or something like that. And so that was us. We have kids. We wanted to be at home. We didn't really want an office. And so I think EXP offers, I mean, to me, it's just like forward thinking. It's like it has a technology and I can join in a training at any time. And so, and we had an uh, agent sign up with us in Washington. Um, and mm -hmm. so maybe we structure our business a little differently, but um, we have a team here. And then we also have, um, you know, people who sign up with us at EXP and she was in Washington and she got her first listing. It was actually $1.2 million listing out in Washington. And she's she texted and yeah. I, she, this weekend, she's like, this is the more help I've ever had in all my previous months. She's only, she's a newer agent. So she does need a little bit of hand holding, but like we help her with her transaction card and we help her get all set up. And so she was really appreciative that, and she was shocked that because she, she was really nervous about making that switch because she wanted that local hub. And I think people get caught up on that. And really like Kaylee and I was yeah. all the time, it's who you align yourself with. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, we literally got on a Zoom phone call with her and walked her through how to logistically pull a CMA. MLSs look a lot, you know, there's very many functions that are the exact same as your local MLS. It's not, you know, the, the things we couldn't address, you just 
direct them to their broker or somebody who can help them. But a lot of um, agents, I do think it, it's huge when you come into eXp to learn to align yourself with somebody like men, like business minded and also a sponsor that is willing to help you out um, enough to uh, benefit your business because the bottom line is, is your upline is going to benefit from your business doing Absolutely. well. And that's, you know, and that's when I'm taking the phone calls or Lori's taking the phone calls and we're talking through these agents, you know, we do know it's short lived, you know, as soon as you teach them to fish, they're you're set. It takes that's a lot right. of footwork at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and we do a lot of video marketing. I think that's how, you know, you found us is we do a ton of video marketing. So if you want to be an agent, you want to cold call and door knock, which is successful for a lot of agents, but that's not us. So it, I think you have to align yourself also with how you see yourself running your business. Yes. Um, I guess, Mr. Donnie, what is your number one thing or number one word of advice for someone who's thinking at that point where they're like, should I start a team? Like, what is your one, looking back since you have been very successful at this in Memphis and with eXp, what's your one piece of advice that you'd give to an agent thinking of this direction? decide if they're going to start a team. Um, I think you've got to look at, are you going to enjoy managing people? Can you um, get over some of the same rejections that you will as an agent, but it's going to be from people who you poured your life into for two or three years and you've literally done everything you could. You've wanted them to be successful even more than they wanted to be successful quite often. So number one, you've got to know that it comes with a lot of disappointment sometimes yep. because you're managing people. Number two, I will tell you, selling houses to me is more fun than managing team. I love my team. I love helping agents be successful. That's why I do it. Um, but selling houses, there's just nothing that matches helping one of your friends find a house for their family, right? It, it's yeah. Selling houses is more fun. Yep. So just know that there will be days that are less fun. But of course, both ways have, have issues. Um, I think... And, how you said thick skin, very important yes. uh, all around in real estate. We're doing another video this week on like <laughs> what you need to do to get into real estate. And one of them is, is be okay with disappointment. I think everyone, like we all know on social media, they publish all their successes and they build themselves up that way, but you're not seeing the three listings that they lost two weeks ago or the one that's under contract and didn't close at last minute due to seller or buyer financing. So you're not seeing all that and you're not seeing like the rejection. I think a lot of times you're mm -hmm. the thing is why not me? Like what, like I still do that today. I'm like, what did we do wrong? Like, and so I think if you don't have that thick skin, it's easy to quit. Yeah. Not yeah. And I think it's even, it's just as important or more when you're a team leader, because it's not just somebody that you just talk to on the phone that you may never see again, but it's yeah. literally somebody, it might, you know, somebody you've trained for three years that, and you've helped them be successful. So, so I think that's, that's hard. However, the benefits are pretty amazing. You know, if you can get to the point that you can scale your team, you get a lot of control over your time. Your income is limitless. You get the joy and satisfaction of being able to help your team members succeed. Um, for example, I've got a young lady on my team. She was actually on the police department as well. We didn't know each other. We knew who each other were. Yeah. She left, became a real estate agent last year. She sold three houses. She came on my team beginning of November and right now she has five houses bound up at one time versus the three that she sold last year. It's out over 12 months, yeah. So it's yeah. amazing what you get to do to help people that, you know, hey, I sold three houses and I made $20,000 last year and now I came on Donnie's team and I'm going to make $100,000 this year. Yeah. Um, so the, the benefits are huge. And the last thing I would add to that is you have to be able to look at your agents as your clients. If you're not going to look at the agents on your team as your clients, then you probably shouldn't have Sure. That, that's good perspective. Yeah. They are your clients without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. We all, we wanted your expert opinion. We know you've been super successful out in Memphis building your team and, you know, growing with eXp. Uh, if someone wanted to reach out to you, what's the best way they could reach out to you? Hey, you can reach out to me directly on my cell, 901-409-5168, 409, -509, -509 5168 uh, or reach me at Donnie at morrowgrp.com, just like my last name, grp, like morrowgroup.com. Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, um, and, and I enjoy getting to visit with y'all a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, okay. Donnie. Best of luck, and this is what I love about eXp is just reaching out to agents all over the country and just working with them and collaborating. So um, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll be in touch, I'm sure. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Donnie. Bye.